Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. We had a couple of new releases from Gibson this week. And when I say new releases, we kind of knew about these before, depending on how much you pay attention on soft releases throughout the year. But these new guitars have now officially been launched. First, we'll start with the Gibson side of things. Take a look at this. We've got a non-reverse Thunderbird in three different finish options, starting at $1,799. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. So the non-reverse Firebird's never necessarily been my favorite shape in the world, but they do come in some pretty cool colors. And this one has a very vintage vibe to it. Because previously when they've reissued these, they have like these black pickup covers over top of them, all blacked out hardware. You don't have the matching headstock. It's a very utilitarian looking base. However, this time it feels a little bit more vintage because of their color options as well as the cool matching headstock on this one. So let's talk specs. This is a non-reverse Firebird style body. That means this is not a neck through construction guitar. And you have two different pickups on here. One is mounted with a pickup ring, whereas the other one just kind of hides within the pick guard. And this utilizes two volume controls, one for each pickup, so you can just have whatever blending you want. So if you just want the bridge, you have to roll the neck off. If you just want the neck, you have to roll the bridge off. If you want something somewhere in between, you just dial in the knobs the way you want, and then you have a master tone with these with an output jack on the front. Flipping over to the backside, nothing too fancy, just a belly cut and your regular control cavity back here with a set neck construction. And you've got a rosewood fretboard but I can really appreciate that the entire guitar is done up in the color of your choice. So as far as our color options, we've got Inverness Green, Faded Pelham Blue, which looks very similar, but it's got a little bit more blue to it, but it'll probably have a slight green appearance. So I guess it depends if you want more of a bright green finish versus a kind of a duller green, because despite being called Pelham Blue, as Pelham Blue ages, the yellow clear coat makes it look green. And then if you just don't want anything to do with that side of the color spectrum, you go over here for sparkling burgundy. And let's just say from the stock photos, I am not that impressed with this one, but trust me, I've seen sparkling burgundy in person. This looks fantastic. It's got a very metallic nature to it. It is a beautiful finish. You can kind of see what I'm talking about on this neck. It is not just a flat red color like it's looking. Based on these three color options, which one would I choose to review and demo? Probably Inverness Green might go for Sparkling Burgundy because I don't believe I've done an official review on that color. I just unboxed it in this one when I bought up nearly one of every single prototype from the Gibson Original Collection. But for being honest here, I never even knew this was a thing. I knew about like Thunderbird Thunderbirds, but I didn't realize there were also non-reverse Thunderbirds. I mean, take a look at this vintage one here. It's got more of a sunburst color, not as fruity, but oh yeah. <laughs> I love giant gaudy pickup covers like this one has. I wish they would have included that on this new one, but at the same time, I understand why they didn't. I guess in this case, this is more of a bridge guard. But as far as the pickup layout and the chrome covers, it seems they've nailed that. Doesn't look like we got the rest on the top though. And maybe it varies depending on what year but this looks like a way more extreme belly cut back here as compared to what we're getting on this reissue. There's a different one that we can look at that's definitely been played a bit more. This appears just to be a one pickup version though, but it appears to have more of a comfort cut on the back. But once again, these are on pre-order around 1800 bucks. I think you can get them on Gibson's website depending on how early you catch this video. They usually sell out quickly there, but other dealers are expecting them in late August. So you're only about a month or so off. If you would like to pre-order one through my new Guitar Day program, you can check that information out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. Otherwise, I'm not sure if I'll review this one or not. I might just because, you know, I've never even thought of this bass before. <laughs> so might as well give it a try, right? Checking out a bass occasionally is fun. But next up here, we have the official release of the Epiphone Slash Collection. So we now have the official price point at $899, and they're doing everything here, from your Anaconda Burst, to your Vermilion, to the Gold Top, to the Appetite for Destruction, all the way to the Acoustic Variations, and don't forget November Burst. So I've been quite curious about what the specs were going to be on these. I had a feeling they'd be around $899, but I was surprised not to see Gibson pickups in these things. 
because I was essentially planning on these being like a 1959 Les Paul standard from the Epiphone lineup because those things were $799 and they got Gibson Burstbucker 2 and Burstbucker 3. Whereas the Slash ones, they cost a hundred bucks more and you get the Pro Buckers. I mean, the Pro Buckers are nice pickups. Don't get me wrong. It's just when you compare them side by side, there's one really clear winner unless you really, really like Slash and you want that particular finish. I mean, I know there's a Slash premium built into these pricing, but I thought that's what that hundred bucks was for. <laughs> But it does look like they're coming in a custom hard shell case, so that's a win. And something else that they took from like the 59 reissues. But as far as the specs go, regular Les Paul stuff. Mahogany with a maple top. But they're doing a AAA flame maple veneer over top of the maple top to make it look nice. And you've got the Indian Laurel fretboard with all your regular fretboard specs too. 12 inch, 22 medium jumbo frets, Graftech nut. And okay, they're calling them custom pro buckers. So maybe they took the Pro Bucker and then wound them to be similar to Slash's Alnico pickups? So I guess we can't knock it until we try it, right? But so far, other than the color, it seems the 59 reissue is your better bang for your buck. But I think on these, it would be fun to compare each and every one of these with the Gibson counterpart, wouldn't it? I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Buy one of each and we'll just have this giant episode where we look at them side by side to see, did they get the color just right? Does the Epiphone one look better? Is the Gibson one more attractive? Is there much of a trade-off there? And then we'll continue that on with just one of them and then just do a quick tone demo between the two to see which is better. So to help me in that quest, can we get this video to like 5,000 likes? Because that's going to be an expensive video. <laughs> But I think it'll be worth it and it'll help people make an informed decision on which one they should get. Heck, while I'm at it, I might as well compare it to one of the 59s from the Epiphone collection. So that was everything that I saw get a hard release today. In case you're wondering when those things typically drop, it's on Tuesdays. That's when Fender and Gibson does it. <laughs> but speaking of drops, a viewer of the show had sent me in this email. He thought it might be of interest to me. All right, so this is an eBay auction titled as Early Gibson Les Paul guitar, read description. Okay, let's read the description. Vintage Gibson guitar from an estate find and it comes exactly as pictured for parts or repair only, untested, looks like the neck could need some work. Okay, let's take a look. First thing, just looking at that body makes me think, is that a 1954 Gibson Les Paul? How much is this? $4,000? The headstock is all snapped off and wonky. Yes, yes, yes. I was so excited. I was ready to buy this and make this big video series of me restoring this back to its former glory. Because, I mean, that body looks good. Not so much this foot in the corner of the photo that I'm blurring out for your viewing protection. But I'm talking the greening right here. That looks like a 50s Gibson gold top. Everything's fine. The knobs are broken off. This is looking old. I mean, just look at it. Sure, your pick guard's a little bit too bright. But it's looking the part so far. Wonder if we got any flame hiding underneath this finish. You can tell it was played a whole boatload because you even have a difference in the finish aging right here and the dirt and grime and the wear and tear, nicks and dings, but whoa, 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 whoa. All right, so this is where it all falls apart. Now, if you look at the case, you could have told yourself right then and there that this was a 90s era case, which means this might have been a 90s guitar or, you know, the case just got replaced at some point in time. But instead of a true 54, what we have here is, you know, a 90s reissue that has had a horrendous headstock repair that somebody's keeping together with saran wrap. Oh man, yeah, you're gonna need a professional repair on that, buddy. The back of the guitar looks pretty good though, but a big chip in the side of the neck. But then when you get back here, that's when it's all over. I mean, what is going on with that tuner right there? Do you see that? Never mind this one that's extremely crooked, but that, it, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted. It's not in the center of the tuner. It's either that or it was sunken crooked at one point in time, or it's just throwing me off because the Headstock isn't on correctly and that looks still straight. Okay. Now granted you don't see these 54 wrap tail reissues that often, but this is what that guitar would have looked like brand new not that long ago. You can see that very modernized headstock. I think somebody swapped out the screws on the truss rod cover. And what? 
<laughs> I don't think I want to look at that example. That's that's a, a topic for another day. But what I'm trying to show you here is the difference between the reissue and the originals. Now, the top carve is different on almost every single 50s Gibson, but you can definitely tell that's way more pronounced here. But it's the serial number I want you to take a close look at. The font just isn't quite right on the eBay one. It's close, but not quite there. Now to further identify this, we could take a look at the pop codes and read them to see if that does put it in the 90s era. Or, you know, maybe this is actually a 54 vintage one and then they have a wrong headstock trying to be put on it. But I'm going to say this one is a reissue and he's asking $4,000 hoping that somebody thinks that's a true 54. Because if that was a 54 for 4,000 bucks, yeah, that's a steal even in that condition. But for a reissue in this shape, yeah, like... I think 1200 would be generous. But to end things off, we are talking about Thunderbird, so let's take a look at this custom color Firebird. Oh man, I've never fallen for a Firebird as quickly as I have for this one. That is cool. It's the traditional neck through style. It's a custom color. It's got all the finish checking everywhere. It appears to be all original and has the price tag to prove it at $58,000. But this is one from 1965. It's a Firebird 3 in the rare golden mist poly finish. So essentially, the story goes, in the 60s, Gibson was trying to compete with Fender with all their funky custom colors that Fender was doing on Stratocasters, Jazzmasters, and who knows what all else. Gibson tried to do that on their Firebird series, which in a roundabout way is a reverse Jazzmaster. And so just as people collect custom color fenders, there are collectors of the custom color Firebirds. And the more rare ones go for crazy amounts of money. But this one, you know, it's, it's like a Gibson gold top, but yet yeah, it's all gold. It's pretty cool. But gold would not be my first choice. I would prefer the more fruitier flavors. But here's at least 10 of the colors that you could choose from. Ember Red, Inverness Green Poly, Silver Mist, Cary Green, Golden Mist, Pelham Blue, Heather Poly, Cardinal Red, Polaris White, and Frost Blue. So it's like a gotta catch them all type situation here. And for a true complete collection, not only do you have to get the Firebird 1s in that color, you have to get the 3s and the 5s and, you know, 7s. There are so many possibilities of what you could find for a complete, complete collection of 60s Firebirds. But this just makes me think... Man, I wish the Les Pauls were in production at this point in time of Gibson history because we could have had some cool ones. Like, I just want to custom order Murphy-aged relic versions of every single one of these finishes just to see what could have been. <laughs> that is uh, way too expensive of a video, but I like the title of the video. What if Gibson made Les Pauls in the 60s? All right, troglodytes, I think that's enough guitar talking tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.